Hey guys, I'm Tom on Tech Chat, and have a look at this. 4K, 240Hz, mini LED, and a bloody great big curve. That's what you get with the new Samsung Odyssey Neo G8 gaming monitor. And a big thank you to Samsung for sending this out for me to have a bit of a play with and also sponsoring this video. But as always, all opinions are my own. They do not see my script. I do have a script because I've spent the last week or so using this and making notes but I still don't know where to start. Obviously, Samsung say this is the world's first 4K 240Hz monitor, which is pretty incredible. But I think the first thing you're gonna notice is that curve. It is quite intense, especially on this 32 inch screen, as opposed to say a bigger ultra wide, but apparently it does match the curvature of our eyes. So wherever you're looking, it's the same distance to your eye. Now this is 100% a gaming monitor, but it's not really meant for pros or eSport players. They're gonna want full HD and 360 or 480 Hz refresh rates. This is 4K 240 with a great big curve. This is all about, I'm only gonna say it once because I hate this cliche term, immersion. Now if you have ever used a curved gaming monitor or a TV from way back when, then you'll know the biggest enemy to a curved display are reflections and lights. Well, the good news is that firstly, it's a matte panel, which helps. And also Samsung have added a super anti-glare, anti-reflection film, which does seem to do quite a good job at reducing and softening any harsh reflections or light sources. But still, the darker the room, the better. What do you think though? Do you like curvy monitors? And how curvy is too curvy? Let me know in the comments. Okay, let's talk about that 4K 240, which is the first time I've ever been able to say that in a product video. And as I say, Samsung is saying this is the world's first monitor with that resolution and refresh, although others are coming. But hang on, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Tom, why haven't I subscribed yet? Well, you're right, you should hit that subscribe button and ding that bell so you don't miss out my next video. Uh, but you're also thinking, how the bloody heck am I gonna get 240 frames per second in a game maxed out at 4K? Well. You're not really. I mean, that's ridiculous even with a 3090 Ti. Having said that, we are expecting next gen GPUs. Nvidia's 4000 series is around the corner and pair that with a nice bit of DLSS where possible. And of course, it also depends on the game. So it is certainly possible, but most likely you're gonna have to drop some settings or down to Quad HD or rely on older games. Now I am 31 years old with pretty average eyesight, but I reckon I can tell the difference between 120 and 240 hertz. I think most of us can. But going up to 360, I don't think I could tell. I'm sure 18, 19 year old esports players could, but for me 240 is kind of like the high end sweet spot for what I'm actually gonna appreciate. So at that point, give me more pixels rather than hertz, which is why I think this is ideally suited to me, 4K and 240. I'm gonna be able to appreciate and see both those things. Bear in mind though that to max this out, you do need to use the display port. It is still 1.4 as monitors with the new DP2 spec aren't out yet. So presumably this is using DSC or display stream compression to give us enough bandwidth as at the moment, 1.4 doesn't technically support 4K 240, but here we are. And also I was able to actually manually change the color depth from eight to 10 bit in the Nvidia control panel settings. Although I reckon this is still gonna be eight bit plus FRC. So one DisplayPort 1.4, and that is alongside two HDMI 2.1s, which is great to see, as although HDMI does limit the monitor to 4K 120 with my PC, what it means is I can hook up both my PS5 and Series X and get that full 4K 120 support from the consoles. There's also a nifty auto source switch plus feature. So when the monitor detects a connected device is turned on, it'll automatically switch to it. So while I reckon this is primarily mained, mained, aimed at PC gamers, even though you're not gonna take advantage of the 240 hertz on console, you are gonna appreciate the low response times and low input lag. We're talking just one millisecond response time and just two millisecond input lag, which combined is actually extremely impressive. And then there's the mini LED backlight. So we're getting many more and also much smaller LEDs compared to a regular monitor, which helps boost the contrast and also reduce haloing and blooming. And then together with Samsung's quantum matrix technology, we get even better black levels and much higher brightness. In fact, this supports Samsung's Quantum HDR 2000 standard. So in theory, it should support up to 2000 nits of peak HDR brightness. And yep, fair enough. I actually recorded over 2300 nits in HDR. This is with a local dimming set to high and also adaptive sync turned off. That does make a big difference to the peak HDR brightness. And we're also looking at about 550 nits in SDR. 
The thing is, PC gaming and HDR is still a bit of a weird one. In games that support it, this really does have the brightness to make you squint at the sun, and together with the higher contrast of the VA panel, and also the better, if not perfect, uniformity of the mini LED backlight, it's a gorgeous screen. Now in general, screen uniformity is fine, especially when you're sat straight on, but in darker scenes, and if you look at it from a more acute angle, there is some noticeable light bleed in a couple of areas and a slight dimming around the edges, which is noticeable. Samsung also say we're getting 12-bit black levels for a better gradation between light and dark. And while of course this still can't quite match an OLED in some ways like blooming and infinite blacks, it's close. And in its favor, this gets a whole lot brighter and we don't have to worry about burning. While we do have FreeSync Premium Pro support, which is very nice, with the Premium Pro elements being for HDR and even high refresh rates, unfortunately there is no G-Sync at all. But of course, these days, NVIDIA GPUs can also use FreeSync. Also, while color accuracy is more than good enough for gamers, it's not really meant for professional editors. Although to be fair, Samsung specs do say we should be getting about 95% P3, but then each panel is a bit different. Design-wise, well, I think it looks pretty good. I am a fan of this iRobot futuristic-y white aesthetic on the back, and also we have this customizable core lighting which bounces some nice colors onto my wall behind it. And also we have these two little lights on the edges of the front bezel. I do wish it was a little bit brighter though, but I do appreciate we get core sync, which can actually match with what's going on on screens, so you get your own reactive ambient lighting, which is pretty cool. The whole thing is also nice and easy to set up. You do need a screwdriver, but it only took me a couple of minutes. And also you do have the option to visa mount it if you prefer. I think really my only complaint would be that we have this fairly chunky chin on the bottom. And also I do prefer a joystick to control the OSD, the on-screen display, rather than just buttons. But it is all fairly intuitive. And there is a ton of adjustability here. You can even rotate it to 90 degrees if you want a vertical setup for, I don't know, programming, watching your crypto investments drop, whatever you like. So, the big question, how much? Well, in the US, I can tell you, this will save back about $1,500, uh, which is a lot of money, but considering it's 4K, 240, and mini LED, it's not crazy, and I'll leave a link below if you do want to check it out. And I would have a look, because this thing is genuinely incredible. There's really nothing else out there right now that can compete spec for spec. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. As I say, I will update you uh, about the brightness thing and if I have any other experiences as I continue to use this. Make sure you do subscribe though, because I am now working on my big monitor buying guide, which I haven't done in like two or three years now. Thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll catch you next time right here on The Tech Chat.